Welcome to Computex 2019 at the Aorus X570 booth here. Here we are at the Aorus booth in 2019's Computex. This is a pretty big one because we have some new motherboards here from Aorus. And these are not just new motherboards, they're pretty much doing something that no one else can do in the industry. But with that aside, we'll take a look at the first board here, the flagship. This is the X570 Aorus Extreme, 16 direct phases. And what they mean by that is they're using no doublers. And so they're told this increases the efficiency. It also helps with the overclocks. And they've got a 85% heatsink coverage on this whole motherboard all interconnected via heat pipes which means this is the only board i've seen at computex that doesn't need a heatsink fan to cool down that new pcie gen 4 integrated in the chipset which does need cooling on practically every other board but also going through the list here we've got aquatia 10 gigabits per second nick also got wi-fi 802 dot one one ax with speeds up to 2400 megabits per second you got bluetooth 5 support triple m.2 pcie gen 4x4 support this thing is an absolute beast as well as having a heat sink on the back of the board this is pretty much the flagship of flagships and those heat sinks as well have fins so if you want to put a fan on top of that you're going to see the lowest vrm temperatures possible but with that aside let's go through the rest of the boards and see what aurus has cooking Next up here we have the Aorus Master and I'm told this is going to be somewhere in between uh, like the more popular choice. And so we've got 14 direct phases similar to the Aorus Extreme except that is an EATX, this is an ATX form factor. You've got heat sinks, you do have a heat sink fan down the bottom. Similar features except this time you're featuring a Realtek 2.5 gigabit solution for the NIC but you still have that 802.11 AX. Now, one thing I will point out is that all the boards that feature Wi-Fi on the X570 lineup will also feature that .11 AX Wi-Fi speed. So you don't have to worry about getting slow Wi-Fi anymore. X570 has it all integrated into the chipset. Now, as for pricing and availability, I'm not exactly sure what these motherboards will be released. I am told, just like I was told at other booths, that these will be releasing slightly before the CPUs are released. As for the pricing, I will update you guys as soon as I know. And as for a review, you know what to expect from Tech Yes City. However, in front of me here is the Aorus Ultra X570. So a little bit of a step down from the second in charge. And this one features a 12 plus two power design here on the VRM. And it's got the IR digital PWM controller. Of course, those having the direct phases where all those get a signal from the PWM controller themselves. This one may be using doublers. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But we've also got, of course, PCIe Gen 4, Intel gigabit support, dual M.2 PCIe Gen 4x4, so these things are going to run fast. Now, speaking of the Gen 4x4, Aorus did demonstrate inside their SSDs with the Fison controllers, the E16 controllers that now support those Gen 4 speeds. So you can expect to get those speeds out of the M.2 slots. On top of that, if you want to go crazy enough, you can get the 16 speed slot where I saw the speeds were going up to 15 gigabytes per second transfers both on the read and the writes. And then moving through the lineup here, we've got the Aorus Pro X570. This one does take away the Wi-Fi, so you don't get the .11ax solution. Of course, not everyone needs Wi-Fi integrated on their motherboard. So Gigabyte is sort of segmenting the price performance, but still sticking to the VRM. That's the most important thing when it comes to overclocking on X570. I mean, if you don't want to overclock, you'd probably step it down to a cheaper chipset. But what we've got right here is something with 12 plus 2 phase power design. True power, I'm told, and that's 14 phases in total, which is going to definitely overclock something like a 16 core, for example, which I am told that these boards have been running through the paces on those 16 cores, and these boards can definitely handle it with easy VRM temperatures without even needing a heatsink fan, for example. For NVMe support, we've got PCIe Gen 4x4 dual heat sinks on that too, so you can get those cooled down, make sure they're nice and cool, especially with Gen 4, because they may run a bit hotter than Gen 3, so having a heat sink this time around is pretty important. Now the difference between this one and this one, of course, is you've got three heat sink supports and Wi-Fi, as opposed to this board right here, which does cut down a little bit on features, but you can expect it to come in at a more value-oriented price point. 
And now moving down in the stack, we've got next up here the X570 Aorus Elite. This one takes away simply the M.2 heatsink, so you get one of them. So great for a gamer who only needs a single NVMe SSD solution, but also takes away the fin heatsink design on the previous Aorus Pro. But speaking of the Aorus Elite, you can look at this with 14 phases still intact on the VRM. You can expect this to be hitting hard in terms of those guys who want to get into overclocking, but want an X570 board, but don't need the extended features on the higher tiered boards, but still want to get great value for money. Now we're onto a very special motherboard. This little guy right here is the Aorus X570 LG. Jokes aside, the real naming of this is the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. Now with the Wi-Fi, you get the 802.11ax solution for those really fast speeds. You've also got an eight phase power design here and that I'm told will support the 16 core. How much it overclocks remains to be seen, but interestingly enough, you've got this little cute heatsink on this board with a 30 mil fan. But also underneath that, it is cooling an NVMe drive. And then on the rear, you get an extra slot. So if you want to have two NVMe PCIe Gen 4x4 slots, you've got them on this board. And you may notice on the back also, heat sink encompassing the back of the board, not just for aesthetics, but also for cooling. And all these boards that I've seen so far also have integrated input output shields, which is something that's really good. I like this addition that's coming into these motherboards. Makes things very clean. And of course, in the future, you know why I love the integrated IO shields, but we're going to say it in this video. And then last up in the stack is not an Aorus board. It's actually a Gigabyte X570. It's called the X570 Gaming X. Features a 12 phase power design. So 10 plus two into SIL. And you've also got support, of course, just like the other boards, PCIe NVMe Gen 4x4. And you've got two of those slots, one of those carrying a heatsink, as well as the chipset heatsink carrying a fan of its own down the bottom, as well as carrying a gloss black and gray theme for the aesthetics. So this thing looks like it has everything for someone who just wants to get into PC gaming, maybe get a 12 core, the uh, 3900X, just whack it in there and start playing games, get those boost clocks and you're good to go. Also on the back, you got the integrated IO shield just like the Aorus boards, but they are going away with the optical out as opposed to the other boards, which all have that optical out there if you want to connect it to something like a 5.1 surround sound. And lastly guys, closing out the video, Aorus is overhauling all their biases, or so I'm told. So a lot of things are getting overhauled around here. But also on that note, there is a promise to gamers that Gigabyte and Aorus, they're going to make the best boards. And now something else we saw was the NVMe solutions coming in-house from Gigabyte and Aorus that are going to provide PCIe Gen 4 support over that bandwidth. So that's going to saturate that. Looking forward to that. And we've got the heatsink right here on the NVMe drive right beside me. Anyway, guys, that about wraps everything up here at the Aura Suite for 2019's Computex. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to your comments in the comment section below telling us what your favorite board here in the stack was, as well as these NVMe drives. Are you digging them? And a uh, big thank you for your time coming out here, showing us all these motherboards here today. And if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. But if you want to see more Computex coverage, then make sure you hit that sub button, hit that bell notification to get the videos the moment they drop, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Bye.